Kia ora, I'm Regina Morganstern and I operate drones in the hazards group at Te Pu'o Genie Science. So after a natural hazard event, I often go into the field and I collect high resolution drone imagery to look at the landscape change. The 2016 Kaikoura earthquake involved a complicated rupture of more than 20 large faults that extended over a very wide area of this region. These fault ruptures, they ripped across the landscape and displaced wide areas of land, both horizontally and vertically. They permanently and dramatically changed this landscape. For example, this farm cottage was built right on top of one of these active faults and it pushed it sideways by eight metres, which pretty well destroyed it. In some places, the fault ruptures passed right across the coastal highway and railway line. Here you can see areas of coastline that were pushed up and out of the water to create new land. This completely reconfigured the coast, lifting it out of the sea by many metres in places. The ground shaking triggered tens of thousands of landslides throughout the mountainous region and these affected farmland and dammed rivers to create lakes and also buried parts of the coastal highway and railway line. As you can see from these images of the Seaward Kaikoura range, the mountains are almost completely bare of vegetation. This is due to two main factors. The first being the extreme alpine weather conditions, which limit plant growth, and the second being the rapid erosion of the steep slopes. The Hutton shearwaters are globally unique seabirds that nest in this area. These birds are very vulnerable. They were once much more abundant, but there are now only two colonies left out of the eight that existed in 1960. They are right in the heart of the area that was severely affected by rockfalls and landslides. They make their nests in burrows that they dig into drifts of sand that are about half a metre thick and stabilised by the tussock vegetation. In February 2020, my colleague Dougal Townsend and I visited the Shearwater Stream colony to map the damage from the earthquake. We were part of a larger team that also included seabird scientists and conservationists that aimed to survey the number of chicks that were present in the burrows. Uh, the, our job there was to uh, go and check on the ground and look for damage to the landscape caused by the earthquake. The, the red line shows the Jordan Fault, which is one of the earthquake faults that ruptured during the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake, and that is only about one kilometre away from the Shearwater nesting site. So the rocks that make up the Kaikoura range are sandstone and argillite. Sandstone dominated areas are paler, and then the argillite dominated areas are, are darker. Um, and you can see um, where the tussocks are, and that's mostly where the birds are nesting. Uh, and these birds are really unusual that they're the only seabird that nests in an alpine environment and they have to fly from there to the sea every day to feed. The, the sandstone tends to have a lot of jointing in it. Joints are planes of weakness in the rock that makes it break up into lots of blocks and you get a lot of collapsing of the, the sandstones. One of the biggest collapses that we saw at the nesting area um, was at the end of one of the colonies. Um, so you can see that there's a, a really big fresh looking scar uh, with sandstone and argillite uh, showing up as paler and darker beds. So this is typical of the grey wacky rocks. There's a lot of deformation in here so uh, they're not particularly strong and we're not really surprised that they they fall apart when they get shaking. So this shows little uh, small fault scarps um, that are kind of heading towards the Shearwater Stream nesting site which is just out of view. There's a structure which is a, a helipad and this was damaged during the earthquake. Um, a crack formed just above on the ridge and the helipad slipped down the ridge uh, about two metres. This just shows an overview of subcolony 2, um, so the relatively stable slopes where the vegetation is and then up behind um, you can see all the cliffs that are just continually eroding and so steep that there's no vegetation or soil. You can see there's a, a big area of 
fresh rock. So this was another big collapse. So on the ground at subcolony 2, this was really the only sign of deformation that we saw. Um, it's a, about a 5 centimetre wide open crack. So this shows the, the back edge of where the burrows are um, and there's no evidence of any slipping of the soil away from the rock at the back of, of the colony. So this is one place we also did see a bit of cracking, especially along the ridge. Um, and we also noted that there were some collapses of the cliff above and some rockfall and debris that uh, came into subcolony 5. So despite this being a really rugged environment and um, a lot of hazards at rock falls and cliff collapses and um, all of that going on that happened during the earthquake, somehow the birds at the colonies managed largely to get away with it. It doesn't seem like where the birds nest at the colonies themselves has had too much damage on the ground. Um, there's a bit of minor cracking and some rock falls uh, which could lead to ongoing damage in the future. Um, but for now they seem to be pretty good. Most of the subcolonies at Shearwater Stream appear to have fared well with respect to landslide and ground cracking impacts, so they've escaped significant landscape damage. But this habitat is still very vulnerable to future impacts. The damage to the nests and disruption to the breeding cycle is being monitored by the landowner and the team at Pui Peak Station with support from the Department of Conservation.